Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Man in America. I'm your host, Seth Holhouse, coming to you live. So folks, it's been another crazy week. Every day, these so-called elites are becoming more and more brazen in their evil and hubris as they not only slander and ridicule God, but seek to become gods themselves. So this week, CERN fired up again with the goal of piercing the veil into other dimensions and summoning who knows what back into our dimension. Could this be why the very next day, the Georgia Guidestones, a monument detailing a diabolical agenda to reduce Earth's population to 500 million people, was reduced to rubble? Was it God's wrath? Were they burying the evidence, or was it just another bizarre ritual? Who's behind these two events, and what do they show us about the sinister beliefs of those who rule our world? Not for long, though. So joining me today is my very good friend and incredible researcher, Rob Counts from Edge of Wonder. And folks, if you've had any doubt that we're in a spiritual battle, you won't after today's show. But first, a few things before we get started. First off, if you're not following me on social media, make sure you are on Telegram and Truth Social, where I'm active as Man in America. Also, today's show and all my other shows are available on podcast as well. So in the description below the video, there are links to Apple Podcasts, Podbeam, Spotify, etc., where you can listen to the Man in America podcast. So make sure you go subscribe to whatever platform you're using for podcasts. That way, you can always have Man in America in your ear. Imagine that. Also, today's show is brought to you by Rise TV. The subscribers at Rise TV are literally the reason why both Rob and I can bring you this critical information today. With big tech censorship and demonetization, they've made it really, really tough for people like me and like Rob, who got kicked off of YouTube with over half a million subscribers. People like us that have a mission to tell the truth, and that's why we built Rise TV. Because folks, right now we're at war, and it's an information war. And man in America, this is how I'm fighting. So over on Rise TV, we have a massive content library, like amazing, amazing stuff going into the deep state and just an incredible amount of information over there. So please come try it out. And there's also an incredible community of patriots. And at the end of the today's show, we're going to have an exclusive Q&A where you can ask us really anything. So there's a link for a free trial in the description below the video. And folks, it looks like we have some shaky times ahead of us. Look, Russia, China, India, and dozens of other countries are on the verge of announcing a new global reserve currency. So what's that mean? Because if they do, which it looks like they will do that, the dollar will lose its position as the dominant global currency and head towards collapse. You see, the world is fed up with the central banks in the United States printing money out of thin air and expecting to trade it for things of real value. So Russia has already backed its currency with gold, and many other nations are expected to follow, including China. So for most of us Americans, the U.S. dollar is all we know. Our wealth is completely tied to it, whether it's through the stock market, our bank accounts, pensions, 401ks, etc. So if the dollar falls, all these things will fall with it. I'm not exaggerating. You could literally see your life savings wiped out overnight. And look, I'm not a financial advisor, so please, please do your own research. But I believe that now more than ever, it's a good time to start considering transferring at least some of your wealth into physical gold and silver. Real world assets that have stood the test of time. We're talking over 5,000 years test of time. And if you want to do this, I'm very confident in recommending Noble Gold. So with Noble Gold, you can buy gold and silver directly, have them ship it to your front door, or you can do an IRA transfer, which is what they specialize in, which allows you to transfer your IRA assets into physical gold and silver with zero taxes or penalties. And most importantly, you can trust your wealth with Noble Gold. They have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau and have hundreds of positive reviews from the folks they've helped. And look, I want to be really clear. You don't buy gold and silver to get rich, all right? You do it to protect your wealth. But if things get really tough, history has left us many stories of folks scooping up land and other valuable assets for a few gold coins. So now's the time, folks. If you want to learn more about this, open up a new tab right now and go to goldwithseth.com or you can call 877-646-5347 to speak to someone right here in America right now. The folks at Noble Gold will take really good care of you, answer all your questions, and walk you through every step of the way. And again, if you want to give them a call, it's 877-646-5347. And look, folks, if you already know someone that sells gold and silver, 
great, more power to you. Whether you work with Noble Gold or not, please act now before it's too late. All right, folks, so we have had some interesting things happening from the green skies out west, which we're going to talk about, to crazy weather in Switzerland, to the destruction of the Georgia Guidestones, which they're saying has been an explosion, but there's a lot of things that make it look like maybe it was an act of God. And I couldn't think of a better guest to have on my show today to talk about this than Rob Count. So Rob is one of the founders of Edge of Wonder, which was one of the great, great YouTube channels that really taught me a lot that I've learned about the deep state and communism and even weird stuff like UFOs and the occult. And up until there's this one Hunter Biden laptop thing, maybe you've heard about it. It was the day that that story was going to break that Rob and his partner, Ben, they saw their account get wiped off of YouTube. And so here we are back on YouTube again. So just don't tell YouTube that Rob's on my show because they'll probably kick me off of YouTube as well because Rob's one of those guys they don't like. So without further ado, let me go and bring on Mr. Rob Counts. So Mr. Rob Counts, welcome to the Man in America show. Hey, everybody. Thanks for having me. Oh, so it is. It's it's good to have you here, man. And you know, while a lot of my topics I I cover are more you know geopolitics or finance or you know th- those types of things that just that's where I happen to find myself at these days. When the, these types of events happening, uh, you know, with like the CERN, which is already kind of crazy and weird, we're going to be diving into that. But then the Georgia Guidestones collapsing, like this is the conversation I was excited to have with you. So, what do you think about what's happening? Honestly. Like, in all honesty, I really think the tides have turned, finally. I think that it's been a really long time. It's looked hopeless for a really long time. And we can see now that the forces of good have been creeping in because evil can only stay evil and command for so long before there is pushback from the other force in this cosmos, which we all know is the, is the actual hand of God, which we saw a video of actually uh, a few minutes ago, it was showing you that hand of God that appeared a couple of days before CERN arrived um, out in Canada. That was Saskatchewan that that uh, hand appeared. Lightning coming out of it and everything. And I think um, I think either, you know, with the Georgia Guidestones, we're going to get into this, but either that was a, that is them hiding the evidence because they're about to do something crazy, or that was none other than the tides having turned and and finally things are changing for the better. And, you know, I'm holding on to that second one. I think the latter is is more appealing to me. So let's pull up. I've got an article about the Georgia Guidestones here. I've got a few things to show, but why don't you walk us through, like, what are the Georgia Guidestones? Like, you know, was this built by Native Americans as like a a winter (laughs) solstice thing, or was it built by John D. Rockefeller? Well, you know, it's actually, they they call it... um, what, what are they called? The, the modern day or the American version of uh, Stonehenge, Stonehenge or something, right. right? Which is actually, to be quite honest, that's an insult to America and it's an insult to history because no one even knows what those um, those ancient structures are. But here we have a modern structure that has basically trash written on it. Um, you know, it, we've got a structure that was put up very mysteriously in, in Georgia. It happens to be almost 666 miles from, you know, the UN. And the text on the Guidestones appears very, very similar, like eerily similar to the the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals by the UN. Yeah, let's scroll down here, won't you? So these are the, like, walking through what the text says. There's like almost like, what, 10 commandments, right? Yeah, it's like, Correct. So, uh, you know, the, the, a lot of people say that this these are the things that need to be up if there's a post-apocalyptic world. But but I disagree. Um, I argue that there have been secret societies for a very long time, at least since, the you know, the, the Crusades that have come about that have, you know, really meddled in trying to create a world that is suitable for the top three percent, let's say. And. You know, in order to do that, they start looking at things like, um, you know, how many people are are using up all of the resources that we have here on planet Earth, which was that first one of the Georgia Guidestones, which was maintain the population to 500 million people, which I mean, think about how many people that would kill. I mean, yeah. if if we were to do that, so we're talking about like the first one blatantly referring to 
some form of eugenics, you know, where 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 these <laughs> these elites or whoever it is has control over the population, the amount of people on the planet. Why? So that they can keep the resources to themselves. I mean, none of that really makes sense. So that that um, that's actually a slap in the face to just humankind in general. You so know, basically, um, real but, quick. So these uh, so on these stones, they have these kind of ten commandments, which you can see right here if I zoom in a little bit that these 10 commandments are on these stones, which detail things like, you know, maintain humanity under half a billion in perpetual balance with nature, which is strange. But then what's crazy is that these are on like what they're in like eight different languages. Yeah. Well, and it's not just, it's not just languages. These are ancient languages. We're talking about Babylonian, you know, like, ancient Babylonian, we're talking about ancient Greek, Sanskrit, like these are like the big languages that were here before the dawn of time. And then English, which is sort of like a guide to the to the others, um, which is kind of strange. And, um, you know, some of these things like look at number three, unite humanity with a with a living new language, a common language that everyone is using. You know, the, they 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 seem to really echo um, a lot of what the UN is trying to do in their 2030 goals. Um, you know, this this idea of diversity on there. You know, these went up. Don't forget, these Georgia Guidestones went up in 1980. They were they were that was the year that I was born. Um, I think you were a couple years after that, Seth. But <clears throat> 1979, there was a uh, there was a proposal that went up uh, to to resurrect these or, or erect these uh, guide stones. And um, it was by a, an anonymous man who his name was R.C. Christian. OK, he, he he maintained his anonymity. No one was allowed to know who this was. And he only talked to two people, someone helping him arrange the guide stones and then the mason who put those up. The yeah, professional was like, that was actually like the got banker those up. that was f- helping you know, Correct. kind of finance it locally. And, and then the guy whose family owned a, well, cause I guess what, it, like that region of Georgia is I think one of the world's largest um, quarries for this particular kind of stone. The best granite in the world, yeah. the best granite in the world. So the, it, it, the quarry was there and, um, and yeah. And what's strange is that for someone who does a lot of research into the occult, you give me a name like R.C. Christian, and I'm like, come on, because like basically the Rosicrucian order was um, developed by a na- man named Christian Rosenkreutz. OK, and so R.C. Rosenkreutz, right, Christian, you just like you're you're swapping the name. So this was someone in the Rosicrucian order, obviously, like we're not stupid. So, you know, it, it, give me a quick just brief on who who were the Rosicrucians? Like, what is it's that like an brief. Illuminati order or what is this? Well, okay. So, well, and, and it's easy to, it's, okay, let's back up to the, the great, the Crusades that, that took place. Okay. During the Crusades, we had a bunch of righteous Christians going over and, and fighting a war for what they thought was, you know, bringing Christianity to the, to the world. Right. But they ended up in a place that they weren't prepared for. They ended up in the Middle East where there were very, very different stories about what happened in the Bible than they read in the Bible. You know, they had they had people telling them stories back that actually now you've got it flipped and Lucifer is a good guy. And actually, he's the God of the earth. And, you know, so they're like listening to all of this stuff. And it's not just that they're seeing things. They're seeing new like magic in some, like so what you could call magic, you know, maybe it was just new to them. They had never seen anything like that. People doing different things, different ways of healing. And it was kind of in a way opening them up to see new things that they had never seen before, but they kind of got duped in the act. Because if you think about it, what was Jesus flipping tables for? I mean, he he was here and he was seeing all of these, you know, and Moses too, like, like, you know, we see these people, you know, um, they're, they're, um, uh, you know, they have false idols that, you know, they can't they can't even go like a couple of days without without starting to, um, you know, uh, it, it's just crazy. So well, I remember, I remember it, as a kid watching the movie on um, on Moses, when he goes up to and he receives the you know, Ten Commandments and he comes back down and there's like orgies and false idols. It's like it's exactly. like it's almost like you leave like a, like a three year old in a room for an hour with like a bunch of cake and candy. You come over and there's, there's like. Somebody just poop on the wall. You know what I mean? Like that's what he came back down to. 
Yeah. And, you know, um, this is human beings. This is this is actually who who we are. It's important to recognize where we've been. And those stories in history were left to us specifically to avoid those things. And we're not learning. Clearly, we're not learning. Um, so, you know, with the so what happened was when these Knights Templar went over there and they got opened up to all of this stuff, they came back to their countries of origins and wanted to talk about this stuff, but knew that they would be hung or killed for talking about it because, you know, anything that appeared even remotely satanic would have gotten nixed at that time. That's how the world was. So what did they do? Well, they created these secret societies and there were pretty much two main secret societies at the time. One was the Knights, the Knights Templar kind of bleeded into Freemasonry. And I could describe that, but it's a long story. But you've got Freemasonry, <coughs> excuse me, and you've got Ros the Rosicrucians. And the Rosicrucians were sort of like, depends on who you ask, but the Rosicrucians were sort of a Christian wing of the Freemasons that blended eventually Hermeticism into the whole thing. And I can tell you from my research, not a lot of people will agree with me on this, but when you really look into it, this Hermetic, this Hermetic stuff is behind some of the most evil stuff in the entire world. We're looking at the foundations for comp things like communism, for a lot of the different things that have just killed lots of people all over the world. And then now, I don't even have to tell you that, but look into the origins of things like communism, of the Illuminati, of like all of these different um, secret societies. And there's always this like very strong connection to Hermeticism in all of them. And a lot of that Hermeticism so, really ties into, you know, things like Stonehenge, the solstices, a lot of, um, you know, pagan uh, rituals. Because uh, even these, these guide stones were so accurate like that you could walk up and how they, they'd have holes in them so that the sun would be shining through and it'd show you exactly what day it that it was right actually yes. so let, let me pull up something really quick i found this old article and it's interesting because if, if now if you look at the guide stones and you go research them all the more recent media coverage of them they talk about it as if it's like mount rushmore like all oh, this very significant you know like the american stonehenge it's like that wasn't it at all. So let me read a little bit from this article. So this was back from, this is in Wired back in 2009, which is interesting because you can tell that it was before the media really kind of took on this crazy agenda. So what it says, I'll read through a few parts I highlighted, is that the Georgia Guidestones may be the most enigmatic monument in the U.S. Huge slabs of granite inscribed with directions for rebuilding civilization after the apocalypse. So that was really weird is that like one of the main purposes of these guide stones were to serve as guide stones, like literally stones that would guide humanity after an apocalypse. So if we, if we kind of come down here a little further, it says, so what's most widely agreed upon based on the evidence available is that the guide stones are meant to instruct the dazed survivors of some impending apocalypse as they attempt to reconstitute civilization, which that's kind of weird. Um, yes. But what it continues is that so, you know, and, and talking about how this would work. So Christian, right, R.C. Christian, who's a guy that was supposedly behind this, he had the plans. He's the one that had the finance backing it. So he, this guy explained that the structure he had in mind would serve as a compass, a calendar, and a clock, but that it would also need to be engraved with a set of guides written in eight of the world's major languages, and it had to be capable of withstanding the most catastrophic events so that the shattered remnants of humanity would be able to use those guides to reestablish a better civilization than the one that was about to destroy itself. Like, talk about... So then how did it blow up? Yeah, exactly. It's like, it's meant to survive an apocalypse, yet some teenager yeah. with a pipe bomb just took it out. <laughs> yeah, right? I'm sorry, an M80 didn't do that. Yeah. So coming down, there's some other weird stuff here I want to I bring up. Let's see. So... So in talking about this, so it was built in this small little town in Georgia. And what they say here is, as word of what was being inscribed spread, right? Because the first thing is basically limit the population to half a billion. That's a really weird thing to be memorializing on this giant kind of tomb-like structure. Yeah. As number one, by the way. As which, the first rule. On. Yes. It said that the um, that Martin recalls, so Martin was the banker you mentioned. That even people he considered friends asked him why he was doing the devil's work. So a local minister, James Travisted, predicted that occult groups would flock to the guide stones, warning that someday a sacrifice will take place here. 
Um, those initially inclined or those inclined to agree were hardly discouraged by Charlie Clamp, the sandblaster charged with carving each of the 4,000 plus characters on the stone. So listen to this. This is the stone carver. So during the hundreds of hours he spent etching the guides that he said he'd been constantly distracted by strange music and disjointed voices. So there's some really weird stuff here, but let me go ahead and bring up, Rob, a video. Uh, let me bring this up for you. Uh, this is, this the is like actual... this is like a this is like a man in America watch party of like an, an <laughs> occult object getting blown up. <laughs> yeah, exa- yeah, exactly. So like, so get out your popcorn. Everyone talks about here. Here's your popcorn moment, folks. Right? Exactly. So here are the Georgia Guidestones, and boom, right. So this is the footage that was released by the, I think it was like the Georgia Police Department. Um, and then supposedly there's this this car fleeing. Now, I, I just so happened to have a silver sedan with a sunroof and I was in Georgia around that time, but it wasn't me. It just, just trust me. <laughs> um, but here's, so here's what I want to bring up just so that, and I want to get your thoughts on this. So this right here, this is an aerial drone view of the destruction. So they're they're pitching the story. They're trying to tell us that this was a bomb that went off. All right. So you can see here the structure. So it was five main pillars that were supporting this, what they call it a capstone, which is a 25,000 pound stone that sat on top. Now, one of those pillars was blown up, as you can see, right? And, and you look at a different angle, you can see, let me fast forward here really quick. So you can <coughs> see that one of the pillars, I'll pause it right here. So one of the pillars was blown up right there. Now, here's the question I have is that if there was a bomb that was put, that was placed that could blow up one of these five pillars and literally like if you look at the videos of it, there's debris hundreds of feet away. So how would you, how would you blow up one pillar yet the other four pillars are perfectly intact, still standing? And so there's a lot of people that are actually saying that this was a lightning strike. This was some sort of act of God that did this. And I, 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 I tend to want to agree with that because it just doesn't make sense. I and mean, what do you think about that? Yeah, it's, um, you know, I, I, I'm not an expert in, in blowing things up. I didn't grow up in Ohio, so I, 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 I wouldn't did. be able to answer that like you. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> that, like, the, the, the thing that's important here is that Granite is very, very sturdy. Like that, that's the stuff that is going to last an eternity. Like if you want something to last thousands and thousands of years, granite really will play that role. So it, it being that dense and sturdy and heavy, you'd have to really know what you were doing in order to blow that one tablet up. Talking about bombing here, right? I imagine you'd have to do it just right and it doesn't even look like the other the other stones have much damage. No. So I don't know. It's a it's a good question. It's something that should be looked into. It's even weirder that instead of looking into that more, they just took the other guide stones down, which I'm happy about. You know, they took them all down now because it was a safety concern. I mean, obviously, a bomb goes off. One of them gets affected. You don't know if that's going to fall on someone. Right. So it makes sense why they did take them down. But. <clears throat> You know, if you replay that video, it does look like the explosion is coming from the bottom and, and shooting out. So it's hard to say. I don't I don't necessarily I would think I think that that was a bomb. I think that was a calculated thing, but I don't know by who and for what reason. Yeah, it's there's something behind it. But, you know, one thing that the the occult or you know, whatever you want to refer to the cabal, the, the evil people in this world, they're all about symbolism. And it's, it's these types of, you know, statues and monuments that, that there's so much inner meaning. And, and, and pretty soon we'll, we'll go on to the discussion about CERN and we can show some of their opening ceremonies and you can see how dense they are with their meaning. And so, like, the fact that they built this structure to last the apocalypse and to be there, yeah. like, like, it's almost like this was what symbolically represented the destruction in the apocalypse that they probably planned, right? But then it represented them taking control after the apocalypse through these guide stones. So it's just like, if you look into what this means, like to me, what this shows is that 
there's this destruction happening, but they're no longer in control of it. And the fact that their like main kind of monument that was built to memorialize that process was just destroyed. I feel like that it's like you, what you said that there the tides are turning on this. Hey, you're, you're muted. Sorry about that. I have to agree with you. It's it's actually kind of um, it's kind of exciting, um, just because you know I, I want to say like that doesn't mean that the next several months to a couple of years is going to be easy. I still think that the effect that that this parasite on the planet has had is really going to have an effect for some time. It's going to take time for humanity to to recoup. But the fact that these things are changing even a little bit indicates that hey. Maybe the worst, uh, you know, from that end is over and we're going to actually start seeing, you know, some righteous forces coming in. Yeah, I, I think it's about, I think it's about time. <laughs> I think that, it, it is about time. Totally. Yeah. Well, it, it also makes me just reflect on this, this time period in history. And like a couple of years ago, I would guess that most people did not even know what the Georgia Guidestones stood for, or even that they know that they exist. But you know, like I, I saw this information. Like I'm not, I went onto Facebook, and I'm still on there because I, you know, obviously print my Man in America, and it's it's a really useful way for me to tap into what a lot of people that I grew up with are thinking about. And I saw multiple people I went to high school with sharing articles about how the Georgia Guidestones were destroyed, and so the fact that this stuff has become so mainstream and that people are celebrating it, I, I think it does that. There's a shift that's that's been happening. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And and I do think it's it's interesting that it's one of those anomalies uh, on in America that people like have heard stories about, like they're aware of it, even if it's more in the background. So when something like that happens, everyone's kind of getting behind it, you know? So what's crazy is that the timing of all this, because we just yes. had seen that they just started back up CERN. Which Sorry, I, I, yeah. And I've got a, a short video here. Um, it's just a, maybe a minute and a half or so that just gives like a little bit of an explanation as to what CERN is because it's kind of a crazy thing you have to see to believe. But let me go and pull this up and play this because this is going to be helpful. This is CERN, the nuclear research laboratory on the border of France and Switzerland. It features the most powerful particle accelerator on Earth, the Large Hadron Collider, or LHC. What does it do? Well, it accelerates and collides particles at 99.99% the speed of light. And maybe it could produce the very first lab-grown black hole. How big would that black hole be? What so they're saying in this is that it could produce this black hole, but I want to bring up an important article here because I know that you and I were getting ready to dive down some sort of rabbit hole of could this be opening up portals to into other worlds or opening up a, a you know portal to hell. But I, I just want to save ourselves some time because Snopes has already done the research for us. And so Snopes has told us that no, CERN didn't open a portal to another dimension. So we're going to go ahead and end the show now because there's not much really to talk about anymore. Wait, Seth. <laughs> Before you end the show, um, if Snopes said it didn't happen, that means it did 100%. <laughs> so just reverse anything Snopes says and you've got the reality, right? So maybe there is something to look into here. Thanks for thanks for giving us a lead, Snopes. Now that you've said something, <laughs> I know to look into it. It's funny because, uh, you know, whenever I'm researching a topic, and it happens all the time. Google really prioritizes these fact checkers and their algorithms. So I might look up something about the jab or something about CERN or the Georgia Guidestones. And it's like you instantly see there's like 15 fact check articles. And it's like, oh, okay. So this is exactly what they don't want us to look at. Exactly. Exactly. That's And that's how they are. I mean, you know, CERN, it's that guy kind of summed it up right but it was more it was it was a little bit more sensational what he was saying because if you really start digging into what the scientists at CERN are saying and things like that you get a very different you know picture based in you know physics and all of that stuff quantum theory string theory electromagnetics 
you know, all of the relativity type of things that, you know, we all kind of grew up hearing about in, in our in our advanced science classes. But what's what's crazy is like, I have to ask you a question. It, it's sort of like, OK, th there are on Earth, probably the most dangerous substance, arguably, is a, is nuclear is a nuclear bomb or like the most dangerous weapon is a nuclear bomb. In outer space, the most dangerous thing that you can possibly think of is what? A black a hole. A black hole. I'll say the black hole or, or like a sun. Yeah. Or I guess the so, sun collapsing becomes a black hole. Right. So why don't we just go ahead and take those particles that are extremely dangerous and blast them into one another at light speed <laughs> to create microscopic black holes so we can study the results? That just sounds like an amazing idea, you know, just tampering with the most uncontrollable substances in the universe. And this is what they're doing over there. Yeah. They have, <laughs> Seth, they have a thing in Switzerland called the antimatter factory, where they create something called antimatter, which is much more dangerous than a nuclear bomb. A small amount of this substance would equal, like a very small amount of this substance, would equal something like 20 Hiroshima bombs. Now, they claim that they're not able to make a large amount of this antimatter, but they are transporting this most dangerous substance in the entire planet around in trucks. You know, this makes me think even more so that, like, here's more proof that God is looking over us. It's like, how, how, exactly. have, we, how have we not how destroyed we not our entire world by now? Like humans are like, there's a reason that humans, you know, they say like, okay, we're only using 10% of the brain. Well, there's a reason for that because if we could use all of our brain, we probably would blow up our whole world, you know, a hundred times over by now. So uh, yeah, like, again, the thing. fact that like they're not causing mass chaos with this is like, I think that we're really lucky. And to me, it's just another sign that, you know, God is looking over what's happening in our world. Well, and, and, and I think like we're getting, we're getting the benevolent treatment right now. The only thing that's happening right now is that as soon as CERN started back up, I mean, right away in Switzerland, there were terrible, terrible hailstorms, terrible flooding, right? I mean, these people are being given signs, you know, like, and, and I honestly think if you're not looking at omens, you really like, like, look, the world isn't what you, it's not what scientists think that it's just this matter and particles and stuff. Like these things happen. Everything is alive around us. For it to not react to something because it's alive would be madness. Like you're alive. I'm alive. Do you not react? Does your exactly. body not react if you get cut? Of course it does, right? Well, let's talk about this because this is what you sent me is that these green skies that start appearing in South Dakota, now they're saying it was right before this storm. But this is really insane. So look at this. This this is the same day that CERN is activated. Have you, these are unedited images right here, right? These are just images people are posting on Twitter. Yep, there's a lot of them. Um, you know, it's supposed to be that there's a very specific type of storm that's like combined a with a sunset. What's that? A derecho, I think. Yeah, is what derecho, it's the derecho storms. But, but like, like, look, look at, at this. this. This is like insanity. Like, I, have you ever, like, I, my whole life, probably like most of our listeners, I've observed weather my entire life, right? Like, I've gone outside since I was a baby and noticed what's in the sky. I have never, ever seen like a green cloud from hell like this. Yeah. It looks straight out of Stranger Things. And look at the left side. It looks like there's a, that could be the photo, but it looks like there's like a red line coming down. Like a red line down. coming down. Yeah. yeah. Weird. Yeah. Well, and so let's also talk about this video, this hand of God, because this is something This, as you mentioned in the beginning. So can you explain what this is and like where this happened? Yeah, this is a this is a storm cloud formation in Saskatchewan, which is um, in Canada, you know, in the up north. And somebody recorded this. And if you if you play the video, you can see lightning shooting out of the hand. Here it comes. Boom. Man. <laughs> I mean, I don't think that that was the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man doing that. <laughs> Seth, like. You know, th this is a just look at that. 
It's like just a day, just a day before CERN, you know, re reboots. Yeah, I mean, how do you how do you make sense of this? Like, and again, and I think that I think that what's happening is that as this stuff gets brought to the surface, like the you know we live in a realm of illusion you know we can't see it's like are there angels and demons well you have to have faith because you can't see them right like is god real well it comes down to faith is satan real it comes down to faith because for whatever reason we're not allowed to see these things right but what you see happening is that the real like the tangible manifestations of the divine and when I say divine, it's both like good divine, but also the evil representation of demons and Satan. Like they're manifesting, like they're absolutely manifesting. And something that makes me really wonder is like, what are they doing with CERN? Like, are they accessing something? Like, have you seen the opening ceremonies that they've done with CERN? Yeah, we've covered it on Edge of Wonder. Um, you know, they have a statue of Shiva, which, you know, depends on which part of Hinduism you look into as the god of destruction. And it's just hanging out right in front of CERN. And then you've got these strange rituals that they're doing before they before they run the particle accelerator, which means that this isn't just science. They're actually combining this with some sort of like strange occult belief that they have. And, and I'm not talking about the scientists working there necessarily. It could be above their pay grade, but it is yeah. very bizarre. Because like the video I showed you that introduced CERN, it feels kind of cool. It's like, wow, this is some really cool particle collider and it's looks really high tech. And you look at the videos of it and it looks like something out of, you know, Ant-Man or, you know, some of these new comic book movies. Um, but so I'm going to pull up, I'm going to pull up one of the videos of one of the opening ceremonies, but just a quick, I want you to really quickly tell people where they can find you on Edge of Wonder because you guys have dug a lot into this and you, you like, it's like, I pushed the bar to about here you guys take it like way, way further in what you explore. Um, and also just, you know, the links to um, Rob and Edge of Wonder are in the, the description below. So if you want to go follow, subscribe to their um, their Rumble channel, uh, it's all in the description below. So where can people follow you though, Rob? Yeah, um, well, you guys, uh, our, our YouTube channel got taken down, um, as Seth stated, the morning that the Hunter Biden laptop story broke. I think they were afraid we were going to say something about it and it was a little close Which to you the would election. Have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say we wouldn't have. I mean, it was a big drop, wasn't it? Um, and so, you know, it was a little mysterious that, you know, here we are just minding our own business, really trying to just report on facts and truth that we're finding. And then they're afraid of that. Why? Why would anybody be afraid of that? Shouldn't we be educated people that understand these things? And like, like Seth said, like, you know, the reason why we started Edge of Wonder is because we were just tired of the mainstream media really holding back a lot of stories. Like, it just seemed like, the corporate interests of these of these media companies were dictating what people are looking into. And then why are they why is everybody hiding so many things? So why not just look into these things, give it a shot, see if they're true or not, and then have a discussion, hold a discussion about it. And he, you know, we're we're on Rumble now. So you can you can subscribe to us on Rumble. Please do. It would really help us a lot if you subscribed and, and watched us on Rumble. Um, another place that we found solace is actually, strangely, I started a TikTok account last um, last month, and you know, videos there are going viral. People are thirsty for truthful information. They want to know what's behind some of these stories, like Stranger Things. I have a video on there that covers the Montauk Project, which is what the Stranger Things story was based on, and I go over exactly what happened with the Montauk Project and what you know potentially potentially what the government has been hiding from us. And, you know, that video has gotten over 550,000 views now on TikTok. It's been spread around like people want to know about this stuff, you know. So please uh, follow me on TikTok. You can follow us on Rumble. And please, if you can, subscribe to Rise.TV, where Seth and I actually have our home. Um, Rise.TV is it's the future of what I think is, you know, I know there's a lot of other places doing this, but for, I think, alternative content where we need more people digging into these things and finding the truth. That's how you can support us. We're not, you know, necessarily on Patreon or something like that. We're on, we're on rise.tv. Yeah, exactly. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up this video that you guys have covered. Um, and this is just, this is insane. So ask yourself, so this is what this is, is it's the opening ceremony to one of the tunnels uh, that's part of the CERN kind of infrastructure, which is massive. But you know, you might think of CERN as a science experiment, but ask yourself, why would they be doing this weird stuff 
at the opening of a scientific institution if this science experiment was not in some way tied to some sort of devious agenda. So let me go and pull this up for you. Now it's, it's like it, a weird is, one of those like weird Super Bowl halftime rituals. It, 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 exactly. It, it's it's frightening. It, it's actually scary. But what's crazy is that in this video, which I'll pull here's the I'll, I'll play it soon. If you look to the side of the video, it's like they have stadium seating and there's all these people in suits like that are like all these business professionals that are watching this. It's just like, what kind of weird, like if this is what they do in public at the opening of like a science facility, what do these people do behind closed doors? Like, I don't, I don't know. So let me go and play this for you. And, and I apologize for the audio, the podcast listeners that you don't get to see this horrific display and there's just kind of weird noises. So there's going to be about two minutes of odd sounds and noises and maybe Rob, but I can give a little banter and commentary because it's, it's quite interesting to watch. Like there's these, these people on some train car, half naked, like the best thing. She said she was topless. She she was topless. Was topless. It's like Marty. Like Peter. Peter. And here's some some Ooh, dude with chains. The, the sound here is really, really negative. Look at like the destructive forces of nature in the background on the screen. Yeah. Look at this. So I'm gonna pause this really quick. So this is this is literally a and I apologize for the nudity here. Um, it's a topless woman hanging from the ceiling with some sort of strap on her to kind of hold her up. It looks like some sort of like kind of BDM or whatever that weird like the gimp stuff from you know a pulp fiction and she's got this she almost looks like a lady gaga figure but she has these giant angel wings strapped to her arms and she's wearing a mask of like a cyborg alien looking baby like just watch this <laughs> Idea that Ewoks were going to be in this. <laughs> it's like those things from Dark Crystal. Reminds me of the Labyrinth. Cousin It. <laughs> like honestly, Seth, if you were here, what would you be thinking? Like you and I would just be like laughing at one with one oh, another. Oh, I know. I it, well, it, oh, this is the last scene I'll play. But look how evil this is. It looks like there's some sort of demon woman hanging from the ceiling and being like worshipped or something. Just watch this, this scene. Here. Now look at this. Now you got people marching, holding animal skulls, like like ram skulls and deer antlers. It's, it's the same stuff. If, you're, if you've seen those pictures of those, like supposedly those Illuminati parties where like the Rockefellers and stuff, they're wearing these deer heads. And um, you know, and, and, and again, but look at this. Sitting in the back is a row of people in suits. These are probably like world leaders and politicians that are watching this. Yeah. This is like, oh, and look at that guy on the left. He almost looks like, like what? What is he wearing? That's so strange. I, it, it's yes. Yeah, so, okay, we've had enough of the vi that video now. That's, uh, I think it's quite enough of that. But I think I need to go take a shower. I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, I need to go throw up. But, yeah. but this is so. This is what really gets me because you know I, I think that we touch on a lot of topics that you could say border into the conspiracy. And you know, if you were to tell someone, say you're to tell your friend that you know, watches, not even like watches CNN, it may just watches Fox News and, you know, reads the New York Times or whatever. And if you told them that 
all of these scientists in, you know, in Switzerland have built this massive thing. And if you were to say that they're doing really evil experiments and maybe trying to access other portals and access demons, they would probably think that you were a nutcase. But if you showed them this video, if you said, okay, hold on, maybe you think I'm crazy, but just watch the opening ceremony for one of their tunnels. How could anyone watch this and not think that these people are either like completely insane or worshiping Satan? You know, that's, that's a great point. Like imagine this, this ceremony being done in like the 1950s, what people would think, or the 30s or the 20s, or back even a little bit more. Like they would just be like, you need to kill those people. They're <laughs> satanic. That's what they would say. Yeah. They'd be well, like, let they'd alone be like, during you know, the, witch, and, the Salem and, witch trials. And Seth, we haven't even talked about this yet, but there's two really interesting quotes from people involved <clears throat> with CERN and quantum computation that I want to talk about here. So one is quantum comp, com, I'm going to read the quotes, okay? So quantum computation will be the first technology that allows useful tasks to be formed, to be performed in collaboration between parallel universes. This is by David Dutch, Deutz, I think his name is. All right, now, this is from someone at CERN. Quote, out of this door might come something or we might send something through it. Sergio Bertolucci, director of research and scientific computing at CERN. So, so they're that, trying so to that, open that's a door. That's their director of research. That I mean, They're trying to open a portal. And again, that, that goes in what we were talking about, right? Is that, you know, do angels exist? Do demons exist? Well, it seems like they're trying to use science to open a portal. But my guess, I, I'm just going on a limb here, is my guess is that if they perform that kind of ceremony and they open a portal, you're not going to have these angels waltzing in that are like playing harps and blowing trumpets and saying, oh, hey, mankind, we're here to, to serve you. Like you're going to get, you're going to get Satan with like some sort of half dog, half goat creature. And yeah. it's probably going to eat everybody in the audience. Yeah. It's going to, it's going to be a rehash of the last battle of Lord of the Rings, basically. <laughs> But like, what? So, but here's okay. Obviously, there's this there's this insanity. We we have the guide stones. We've got um, really everything that we've seen. We've seen the pandemic, like all this insanity. And and you know, topping it all off is these demonic ceremonies at CERN. And you know, people say that you know our our world is run by you know Lucifer worshiping pedophiles. And I, I have to say that some of this evidence seems to point towards that, right? But what do you think, like? What's the purpose of this? Like, why are they doing these crazy ceremonies? Like, you guys at Ed Edge of Wonder, you, you've deeply gone into the occult. You've gone into symbolism. What's behind this? Uh, I really do think, like, it's not, an, it's, not a, it's not a quick answer. It's not a simple question. Uh, the, the issue is that you really, like, it, it's like, if you go back to asking the question, well, like, who's in charge of Vanguard, really? Right. And you really start digging into that. You start seeing these tentacles involved in all kinds of strange things. And with science and modern art and things like that, they've really set this situation up for themselves where there's no accountability. There's no way there's no way for them to be held accountable for for the destructive the destructive forces that they're working with and how they're going about operating. And it, and it kind of leads to the question, if you're atheist which most scientists are. I mean, it's just, it's a fact right now, right? If you're atheists and you're blowing particles together, what is the point other than destruction? Because all science has showed us pretty much over the last 100 years is destruction. You, like, their, their, entire, their entire mode of operation is based around killing and destroying. Oh, let's blow these particles together and see what happens. Let's kill all of these animals. Let's test all of these new drugs on them and see what happens. Let's like cut off some limbs and try to grow them back. Like it's all just like destroy, 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 destroy. And why would you do that unless you were really trying to do something, you know? What and it and there is a direct correlation between what guys, um, what occultists you know, back in the day we're doing and today, you know, like it's not that hard to find. I mean, you go back and you start looking at some of these like golden order of the, like the uh, order of the golden dawn and like all of these things. 
And they were trying to blow open particles. I mean, blow open uh, doorways. Like they were holding rituals to blow these doorways open. And maybe they're just, they're looking at this as like science is a way that we can do that. Because otherwise, you know, why do that? And if you look at these families, like if you really start digging into what is the belief system behind these families, you start finding some strange things and you start finding some strange whistleblowers. And some of these whistleblowers were killed, flat out killed for talking about some of this stuff, like the Illuminati and stuff like that. Why kill them if they're crazy? You well, don't kill like someone the, for being the crazy. the German banker, I forget his name. Um, that was really sad. Yeah. yeah the, and can you, can you give a little bit of background about him? Because that was I can't one of the remember. Ones. Well, that one, I can't, there's a lot of bank bankers, but there was a particular German banker who was, who was exposing just child pedophilia in, yeah. in that entire culture. And, and he was weeping about it because he had to, he had to endure and sit through some of that stuff. And he wanted, you know, some reprieve from it. It was really sad. So the, you know, those things really do exist. I'm actually not sure if that gentleman is still around right now. No, he's dead. But there, yeah. So there, uh, yeah. Okay. He actually, his name was, um, Actually, sorry, he was Dutch. His name was Ronald Bernard. He was a Dutch banker. I think that he ended up, he was in Florida uh, at the end of his life. And I think that they found him hung just, you know, coincidentally. But yeah, because I remember him and that, that video has been scrubbed from the internet, but I remember seeing a video of him, you know, in tears. Yeah, you cannot watch him weeping and think oh, he's that in he's tears. making that up. Well, because I remember he's talking about, because he was one of the bankers for a lot of these families, these wealthy families and in, in these big organizations. And he was going, he got invited to their parties and he was, it was kind of strange for him because at first they were like regular parties then they were orgies and it was very sexual with lots of nudity, but like actual orgies, like eyes wide shut type stuff. But then he said that children, they, they brought the children out at a certain point. And he started talking about some of the sacrifice and he, he was weeping. You could see this guy was not an actor. He was describing what was happening. And if you look at these organizations, like if you look into say who's funding CERN, let alone if you look at CERN's logo, which is basically 666, um, I'll, I'll pull that up in a second here. If you look at that, it's like there's an evil agenda. And you know, actually I was, um, so I was at an event with your co-host, Ben, and we were down in Texas for an event. And there was a guy that was at the same event. It was um, a, a Patriot Voice event. And he came and he found Ben and I, and he, he'd been watching Edge of Wonder for a really long time, actually. And he goes, look, so this guy at one point was a really, really, really high level um, uh, employee. And I think that he was under, I'm not going to say, maybe it was, it was a Microsoft type in cor uh, corporation. Uh, he, he was very careful with what he said, but, and he said that he was actually like, his particular skill set was so valuable to this company and that he kept getting promoted, kept getting promoted. At a certain point, he was on the verge of getting like a massive promotion over in Europe. And he said that he went out with these, um, these two high-level uh, gentlemen that were at the company that were kind of grooming him for this promotion that my guess is it would have made him like a multi, multi-millionaire, like extreme success. And he said that he was at dinner with these guys talking and all of a sudden, they started talking about sleeping with children. And he was really put off by it. Like he was like, whoa, whoa, like, okay. And then he, he kind of passed over it that first time. And then he just thought like, okay, what was that? What was that? What was that about? And then like, like you know, he kind of laid low. And then short time later, I think it was a couple of weeks later, he had another meeting with them and they started talking about it again. And he, he like, that was when he, that he drew a line. He refused to go forward with that. And he actually left the company very quickly and moved to a different country, like I think in South America. And they were tracking him. It was really, really crazy. But he was saying that, um, that that was like, the, it was, he could only get, there was a glass ceiling with what he was doing in his, with his career. And the only way to cross over that glass ceiling was if you stepped into that realm of Epstein, like all the crazy stuff that we're seeing in the world today. Yeah, and you find you find similar um, similar experiences being retold about the music industry, um, and 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 other industries too. Just working your way up, um, and you know one of the reasons for these secret societies was specifically to test people to see if they could if they could maintain a secret or not, and if they could, they would get promoted, and if they couldn't, they would stay at whatever level they would they were at, and then only the people at that thirty three degree or whatever it is were you know, enlightened into the higher, into the higher forms of whatever, you know, secret arts that they had. Uh, 
but you know, like this is this was being retold in Stanley Kubrick's um, Eyes Wide Shut, and and you know he's no longer with us. Why? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, folks, it's uh, a few minutes till three uh, Eastern time, and we're going to now uh, start heading over uh, to Rise TV. So. There's actually there's a is a handful of questions I still want to ask you, Rob. But because we're still on YouTube, I can't ask you these questions because yeah, be careful you know, with that. <laughs> exactly. Um, but so we've I've got some some juicy questions for you. But we also want to do a Q and I uh, sorry Q and A for the audience. Here. So if you have any, and it's not just actually questions. If you have any comments on this stuff that you want to share with us and talk to us about, that's also a place for us. And look, folks, if you want. To come join us on Rise TV, there is a free trial in the link below. And not only is Rise TV an incredible entertainment platform, we've got hundreds of videos. I mean, the Edge of Wonder library over there is insane going into the deep state and false flag events and stuff that actually got you kicked off of YouTube, like literally. Um, not only is that, but it r- really, though, by joining, you're supporting us on our mission. And we all recognize, so Rob is, maybe you don't know this, but Rob is actually one of the founders of Rise TV. And he's been on the front lines of trying to tell the truth and being really, really heavily persecuted for it, like kicked off of things, financial stuff shut down, like massive loss of income. But Rise TV is a platform that we built because we believe that this information still needs to get out there. And actually, so, you know, if you've been watching this video on YouTube or Rumble or Facebook, we are still trying to produce as much content as possible on the public platform so we can get this information out to people. But Rise TV is what allows us to do that because we're not making money on YouTube. You know, Rob, you know, you know, you know, if someone has a successful, say you're a liberal content creator on YouTube, you've got a million followers, you could be making a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars a month. Like that's how much YouTube pays. But I think that my last check from YouTube was like thirty seven dollars. Um, and I'm lucky I even got a wow. check from YouTube. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> so that's why we've built Rise I'm surprised TV. you didn't have to pay them 37 for... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Knows. And so just another reminder that in the description below the video, A, there's the link for a free trial. There's also all the links to where you can find the Man in America podcast. I really encourage you to, to subscribe to whatever you know app you're using for podcasts. And you can find the link for Rob's and Ben's Edge of Wonder channel uh, on Rumble, which is where they do a lot of amazing coverage. So, Rob, before we hop over to Rise, do you have any last thoughts for the public channels? I just want to thank everyone for watching this. And there's actually a lot more where this came from. I mean, we're, we we really just touched the surface of a lot of these subjects. And I think if, you, if you're really interested in, in, in content like this and trying to figure out what's going on and even delve into some of those weirder things, like check out our all content section on Rise.tv. You won't be disappointed. Um, and you know, Seth and I are going to be doing more and more stuff together. Um, you know, we have fun on these shows, so be looking forward to that. Yeah. Also, so Rob, you know, we just, you know, we've got over, over 4,000 people watching us live right now. So hey, thank you guys very much for watching. Yeah. Really yeah. And uh, Rob, thank you for bringing a lot of this research together as well, which is really helps to make a great show. So, um, all right. So uh, folks, we're now going to head over to Rise TV only. Again, if you want to join us, I hope that you do join us over there. We'd love to see you, but there's a link in the description below for a free trial. Come check it out. We hope you're going to stay. Oh, and hey, Seth, one more thing. Yes. I'll just bring up that when we go over to Rise TV, I'm going to reveal something that I've never revealed before because it's really sensitive about (laughs) some of the... uh, about some of the research that I did <clears throat> about one specific whistleblower named John Todd, who revealed some things. He ended up dying as well for uh, revealing a bunch of stuff about, you know, the Illuminati or whatever. And um, I'm going to actually go into that and some of the agenda over there. So if you want to come join us, um, we'll reveal some of that stuff and get a little bit more into it. I think it's more uh, it's more appropriate for the Man in America um, audience who is kind of attuned to these things. So we'll bring it up there. All right, great. All right, so thank you all for watching us. Um, Dom, you can go ahead and cut off the public streams, and we're now going to jump over to Rise TV. So just remember, folks on Rise TV, if you have a question or even if you have a comment and you just want to share your thoughts, write comment in your um, in your po- your post. That way, that you know it'll get collected, so Rob and I can see what you're commenting. Um, but also, then we're going to be talking about the um, you know, any questions that you have. So let me go ahead and pull up this information.